Let's add shadows under a player. First, I'm gonna drag in a player cutout. Let's go with Ryan Osgar. And I'm just gonna size it up using shift and option and dragging from the corner. Looks good. So I'm gonna make a new layer underneath the cutout. Hit B to get my brush tool and increase the size using the bracket keys. You can also go up to the brush options here. I'm gonna bring the hardness all the way down so I have a super soft brush. And this size looks pretty good. I'm gonna make sure my foreground color is set to black. And then I'm just gonna click on my new layer to make a soft black dot. Now I'm gonna hit Command T to transform it. And if you hold an option, you can drag from any of these squares and it will bring in the transformation from either side or bring it out. So I'm just holding option. And I wanna, I wanna have this end result where it's like a flat shadow that we can now move using the move tool, hit V and you can move that under his foot. So you'll, you'll adjust this a little bit once it's in position. I'm gonna go back to Command T to transform. To transform, you can also go up to Edit and down to transform or Free Transform right here. And that looks good for that foot. Now we're gonna duplicate this layer to move it to the other foot, Command J. And now we have a new layer and we can name these Shadow Left shadow right just by double clicking in the layer names and now this one uh shadow left his foot is a little it's taking up a, a smaller area on the ground so it's really just his toe that you want to get but then you can see his foot is probably going back a little bit so i like to bring the shadow a little bit stretched upwards too maybe not that much just to give it a little bit more depth so that's a real basic look to get just the foot shadows down. We can take this a step further. If say the light is coming from behind Ryan Osgar, shining down on him, there might be a shadow in front of us here. So we can bring a shadow down that would be more in the shape of our player cutout. So to do that, again, I'm gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna hold command and click on the Ryan Osgar cutout. And that's gonna create dotted lines, the marching ants around whatever layer you just clicked on. Now I'm gonna fill these marching ants with black. So I'm gonna hit G to go to the fill tool. I'm gonna to click in here again with my foreground color selected. And you can see it, it put this black outline or black fill layer of Ryan Osgar. Now from here, we're gonna transform it again, Command T, and we're gonna bring it all the way down. So, yeah, I mean, you could say you want the shadow behind him. If the light is coming from this direction, if the light is coming from behind him, you'd put the shadow down here and flip it all the way. So let's, let's flip it all the way. Let's say this white background is really just a bright light coming at him. So, you know, it's up to you how much you want to adjust this, but I feel like here is decently good. Now you wanna go back to your move tool by hitting V and adjust it upwards a little bit. I'm using the arrow keys to move it around. Just make sure that like the, the feet are matching. If you hold command on any of these corners in the transform tool, you can drag the feet a little bit more and it sort of distorts the whole thing. So this is pretty accurate now. The next step, we want to blur this shadow a little bit. So I'm gonna convert this shadow layer to a smart object by going to filter, convert for smart filters. And that's just gonna allow us to work non-destructively. If we have to later edit the blur, increase it, decrease it, we can do that because this is a smart object now. So it's gonna have smart filters, which are totally editable. So we're going up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And now let's make the radius, I don't know, just move it up until you feel like it looks Pretty good. I like it there. And the last thing we wanna do is reduce the opacity. So you can hover over the word opacity here while the shadow layer is selected and click and drag to the left to reduce it. You can also click this drop down or type in any opacity you want and hit enter. We're just trying to get it to match the shade of the other shadows a little bit more. And obviously it's gonna be darker where his feet are in contact with the ground, it's gonna be less dark as you get further away. So there's one other thing we could do to kind of enhance that effect. So once we have the opacity down a little bit more, we can duplicate this cutout shadow 
by hitting Command-J, and let's put a black mask on it by holding Option and clicking this mask icon right here. That's gonna remove all the effects of this layer currently. The black mask is hiding all of it. Now we're gonna paint back on the mask in white to make the layer show through in those parts. And we just want it to show through a little bit more closer to the feet. So I'm gonna go B for my brush. I'm gonna shift the foreground color to white, increasing the size with my bracket keys. And again, we're on a pretty soft brush here, as soft as possible. And I'm just gonna brush in to make it a little bit darker. And if you made it too dark on this side, you can switch to black and then click to fix that. I'm also gonna bring the opacity a little bit further down. And I think I like that. You can also bring the opacity down on the original shadows for the feet. And the way you do this is I'm just shift clicking both layers and then reducing the opacity at the same time. That's how you add basic shadows to your player cutout.